So to get started, I'm going to work on the cape. And, you know, I just had to look at the picture and try to figure out what I was doing. Now, I'm like a visual learner. I just have to kind of look at something and I can kind of tell how it's done. Um, and that's just how I am as far as learning things. I can just uh, figure it out better on my own if I'm just looking at something. So I just started to draw these little shapes and I cut this out of poster board and then I made, uh, you know, just again, looking at the picture, I just sort of made the shape that I saw, which was this piece. And then I held it up. I measured my neck to see how big around my neck was uh, and just kind of made these to where uh, it looks like there are about five of these around making the collar. And then there's this shape in between this one. So uh, I just traced it out. I drew a circle about the size of my neck. And this is just like a really crude, rough idea. I was just practicing down here. But I came up with these little shapes. And then I made the shape in between that shape, which you can sort of see here. And again, it's got five of this, so I just traced it out five times and then go around and make this shape and then just cut all this out. And what I've actually done is I just cut one of each of those out, taped them together, and I laid that on my fabric. Let me figure this out. All right, so that's going to be the fabric for the cape. And I just drew this shape out here five times. And what I'm going to do, you can see the line around here. I'm just going to lay this on, uh, you know, it's going to be doubled. Like this will be the cape, the collar fabric, and then the back side will be a different fabric. And then also... In between those two layers, I want something a little bit thicker so that the capes, the color sort of stands up a little bit. Um, so I got this, I think it's some kind of quilt batting. So I've traced out my design on the fabric. And what I want to do is I'm going to take the fabric that I want the back of it to be. Now this looks really dark. Um, but this will make more sense the reason I make I'm using two colors and you can use the same red color if you want but I've got to lay out that other color that I want for the other side and lay this down and anyway get that flattened out and then I want to got to think of how this has to be layered. Actually, I want this quilt batting to be on the bottom. So take a layer of that, put it down, then lay my dark fabric down on top of that, and then lay this one back out. And then these little lines that I've traced, y'all are probably thinking, what in the heck is going on here? I'm kind of wondering that myself, but so it'll be the quilt batting, then the fabric for the back side, and then the fabric for the front side. And I'm just going to sew around. I don't know if the lines show up. It's hard to see those lines on the camera, but I'm just going to sew around the lines where I traced out my design and then I'll get that much done, come back, and hopefully this is going to work out how I'm planning on it too. Well, before I go sew it together, um, you want to sew around the lines on the outside and on these parts here, but you want to leave this circle open. You don't want to sew the circle. We're going to leave that open for right now. All right, well, before I go again, let me see here. Just to confirm what I've said, 
I'm going to lay this out. I've got the parts cut. So we want to do the quilt batting or just whatever little stiffer type of stuff you want to use. And then we want the back side. And then here is the part that we'll see their lines to where we'll know where we're sewing. All right, so that's our three layers, and I'm going to actually go in and just sort of pin this all together, all three layers, so that they don't shift and move around as I'm sewing around this little zigzaggedy uh, edge. And again, you can't really see where I traced it, but this design is all the way around um, to the other side. And right here in the opening... You know, this is where the two parts will be tied together. And there's this last little piece that just goes kind of here and here. So that's what this extra little piece is. I've got it traced out on the fabric also. So I will, when I'm sewing, I'll be sewing right up these lines where I've traced this out all the way around and do the same shape over there. Now, when you're sewing... When you're tracing a pattern, you're just imagining this split down the middle, and you want this side traced. And when you bring your pattern over, you don't just keep going this way. You want to flip it, and you get like a mirrored image to make sure that your two parts match up correctly. All right, so I've got those three parts put together and it's very important that you put your batting on the bottom because you want that to be in the middle of these two pieces of fabric and right now it's not in the middle but uh, again we left this circle part open and you'll see when I flip this that part will be in the middle but it just doesn't seem to make sense that it's going to be in the middle since it's already right now not in the middle, but it will when you see me flip it around. But uh, I've just gone around there. I've got it pinned really, really good. And thank goodness I pinned it because it would have been a mess if I hadn't pinned it. And uh, I've got it stitched around the edge. Now I'll flip it over so you can see uh, sort of that design that I created. And I'm actually going to stitch it one more time just to make sure that it doesn't like snap or come loose like later on when I wash it and stuff. I mean, one stitch is enough, but I just I always double stitch everything just so it's stronger. But that's kind of the shape. And I'm going to do that second stitch around here. But then once I get that done, I just got to cut out around all this uh, shape that I've got created here. All right, so I've gone around there with a second stitch. And I just want to cut this out, and um, I'm not going to cut anything out right here yet, because I'll have to flip it and see where I drew that circle. But I'm just going to cut it a little bit on this side so you can see. You want to leave a little bit. You don't want to cut right close to that line. I'm probably going to leave like that much on this side of the line. Just like that. Just go all the way around it. You might can go a little bit closer to it, but um, you just want to, you know, leave a little bit on the outside of that stitch. Alright, so here is the collar now that I've got it cut out. I've took the pins out, and I'm just so happy. Now, this is not like perfect, but this is good enough for me because I've got to where I can't hardly sew anymore. I just get too nervous and just too much anxiety. I mean, it just freaks me out to sew anything anymore, but I'm just so happy to have this part done because now from here out, it'll be so simple to get this uh, cape finished. But now, like we saw... 
we had the layers of the white, the batting stuff, just to kind of give it some stiffness. And I'm seeing that it's not very stiff. I should have used something a little stiffer than that, but it's better than nothing, I guess. And then that dark red and then our final layer. So what I've got to do is just, you know, I kept that opening, that circle unstitched because you want to flip it inside out. And I'll have to work all those little corners out. But you can see how that white will be up in between those colors. And then I've just got to sit here and work these corners out real good. But I'll work on that off camera. And anyway, when I, when I get that done, that white part will be in between them. All right, so I've got that cut out and flipped and I pressed it and I've gone down here just looking at the pictures. Now I've done this real crude. I just didn't, I should have drew a line where I could have got a perfect line coming down, but I just randomly stitched some stitches down through here where these little red sequins are going to go. And you can sort of see that on both sides. But the, as you can see in the picture, there are sequins that go up here as decoration. And then like I had showed in one of my earlier videos, these are Christmas ornaments from the Dollar Tree. You can uh, get like two of these for a uh, dollar. And these little sequins peel peel off really easy as you can see and that just is like the perfect little sequin trim to go on there and I'm actually going to probably just hot glue this on so I'll just cut these little strips and glue them on there where I've made those stitches And uh, like I was saying, back when I did my first little devil video, uh, you know, I'd got these at the Dollar Tree. And you get more off of this than you do those little uh, spools that you buy at craft stores. So you get a little bit more buying it this way. And these are real pretty, uh, real good quality sequins. You can see they're real sparkly. But before I do this... I'm going to go ahead and just cut out a cape using my red fabric. I'm going to do like the outside this bright red and do the inside uh, this darker red. Uh, I think I'm going to have to go back and look at his. I may just do one layer or I may double it up. But either way, I'm going to go ahead and put the cape, just stitch it across here um, before I put any kind of decoration on it. So I've got that laid down and I'm gathered up my cape and I've actually decided to just do one layer. And of course I've gone with the brighter red color, but I've gathered this up with a string and I'm just going to pin it around here. And I'm actually wanting to make the raw edge be on the outside. So when I sew these parts together, you're going to see this kind of rough edge around the collar on the outside but I'll hide that later so I'm just going to let the raw edge be on the outside so that when I sew these together and you flip it over it'll be a pretty edge uh, on the inside but it'll have that raw edge like all this will be seen on the outside but I'm going to go across that with some trim so that won't matter all right, so I've got that stitched across there, and it's not the best. I'm going to flip it and see how it looks. It's not very 
bad. It looks good. It looks fine. I mean, it's not for like a movie or anything. I'm not going to sit here and worry about how perfect it is, but it's just, uh, you know, for a Halloween party that not that many people's going to be staring at it or anything. I got to make sure I get all these pins out of here. Actually looks better than I thought. So I'm going to actually go across it. Now this is uh, the inside. This will be the outside. And you've got that, like that I was saying, that raw edge out here. But I'm going to put some trim out here and hide that. So you're not going to see that once I cover that with the trim. It'll just have that pretty finished look to it. So that looks pretty good, actually. I'm just going to go stitch it one more time around here just so it don't, you know, that one little stitch don't get pulled or snap or whatever. And now that all that's done, I guess I'm ready to just start gluing those sequins where I've made these stitches. And then I've got to attach those little stars. I'm going to mention these stars again since I haven't already in this video. But this is a... Uh, ornament from the Dollar Tree um, and it's got sequins on it and this actually will peel off and I think what I'm gonna do I'm gonna peel this off and I'm gonna glue this to a piece of felt just to give it a back but I just needed that big red star because on his cape, like, uh, let me lay it out here. Wait, I gotta figure out, what am I doing here? Uh, okay, I think I sewed this backwards, but that's okay. This little hem should have been different but anyway what am I doing let's just pretend <laughs> okay oh my gosh of course the devil's gonna be giving us a hard time here all right so let's just pretend this is own and these stars need to go Somewhere right here. I'm just going to have to look at the picture and see what I'm doing. But anyway, with this ornament, I was able to peel that side off. And I'll be able to peel this side off. And that will give me those two stars that I need. And anyway, one goes on this side and one goes on that side. And then he's also got random little stars down his cape. I don't know if they're all over the back or just kind of down on the sides. But this is another Dollar Tree thing. This is like a garland, which I've got it all tangled up right now. But this is just some sort of garland that I found in the party aisle. And I'm just going to cut these little red stars off and glue those down all over the cape just randomly around on the cape. And so, what else? And then, of course, oh yeah, now there is one more part that I'm going to have to, uh, I guess that's okay that I, see, I put this uh, hem, I hemmed the edges on the fronts. And I guess, uh, you know, I've got them backwards, like I meant for that hemmed piece to be on the inside but it's on the outside but that's actually okay because he's going to have this gold trim I got this gold trim at like Hobby Lobby I guess so that actually will be stitched on and that will hide that hem that I wasn't happy with see how that hem should have been on the inside but that's kind of cool because that will just be hidden with this gold trim. So actually that worked out really good. And now it'll look good on both sides. And I won't have to even worry about the hem showing. So anyways, I'll uh, work on this. 
And I know he's supposed to have a this gold rope will be stitched here and that's what will tie it off tie it around the neck the gold rope i think this and the trim came from hobby lobby uh the fabric came from like a thrift shop and then these red stars and the sequins all the red stuff came from uh, the dollar tree and you know now is like a perfect time to go to the Dollar Tree. If you're needing stuff for a costume, like any of these red sequin things, I noticed they are already putting their Christmas stuff out. So, um, you know, that'll be a perfect place to go if you're needing any kind of a sequin trim or red. I mean, they even have them in like silver, depending on what character you're doing. If you're doing this costume, now's a good time to maybe go look for this stuff. And here's how it looks. Now, I'm not going to look at it too good right now because I'm going to kind of make you wait to really look at it better when I do video or picture for the party. Um, but it looks really pretty good for what it is. Uh, I kind of rushed some of it. These little stars, I was going to sew them on, but I ended up just hot gluing those on. And I've got them pretty well all over the back side of it. There's quite a few on there. I've just hand-stitched this little uh, tie on there. Um, got the little sequins done at the top. It turned out pretty good for what it is. I kind of rushed it. Um, I didn't line the cape like I'd originally planned. Um, and then I got these little stars put on, and I did trim those out in some more of that same trim like I used up here. And then, like in the other video... Here are the horns that I made from the ornaments like I used on the uh, collar. Um, now these ornaments, after I got this uh, sequin trim pulled off of there, I thought you could just paint over this with some glue and cover that in glitter and, you know, still use that so nothing really goes to waste. Um, and then I didn't, I don't think I finished showing the badminton racket pitchfork that I had made in the last video. I really like how that's turned out. Um, so there's how that looks. And then I've got his gloves. And uh, now the original uh, outfit that he wore under the cape, he wore like a those one-piece uh, underwear, men's underwear, um, like they used to wear back in the cowboy days and stuff. But I actually found, I wanted my daddy to be a little bit more comfortable, so I just bought him just a regular red sweatshirt and some uh, red jogging pants. And then in the movie, he wore like some red boxer uh, boxing shorts over those underwear. And with, I think he had black rain boots on. But I'm not going to worry about the black rain boots. If I can find a pair before the party, I may get them. But I don't really care what kind of shoes he wears with it but so far i think it's turned out really really good and uh, i'm just so glad to have this project done because this has really been stressing me and it was a lot more work it was easy but it was just a lot of steps getting this done and getting the uh trim glued up here that was a little tedious that was a lot more tedious uh, than i expected that to be but I really love how it's turned out. It's going to look really good when it all comes together. 